Hi, my name is Paul from Cotswold Seeds and um, for a long time now I've been interested in bees. I find them fascinating. Um, and at some point in my life I, was, I always hoped that I would have the opportunity to become a beekeeper. Now, working for Cotswold Seeds we do a lot of things, we talk to farmers every day, but we do spend a lot of time in the office. But just recently we've, we've taken ownership of a farm in the North Cotswolds and um, I saw the opportunity to become a beekeeper um, as part of my work. And um, I, I jumped at this opportunity and luckily it, it was handed to me and, and here we are now and I've got the opportunity to, to keep bees to help pollinate our crops um, and hopefully produce a bit of honey. Now, one of, the, uh, one of the first things you do as a beekeeper is of course you go on a course and um, I, I did that a few weeks ago. It was a day's course and I, uh, it was a course in Mickleton um, in Warwickshire and myself and, and several others were taken through the basics of how to keep bees, everything from how to manage them on a, on, a, on a daily inspection basis, all the way through to being able to recognise certain diseases and how to manage swarms. So having done that course, uh, I was now in a position to find out what to do next. And um, I was reliably informed that it, it's wise to start building your own hives. Now, a lot of people would have their hives pre-built for them. Um, at the time, I wasn't aware of how much work it would be. And, the, having, the idea of having your hives built for you is, uh, is quite an attractive one and obviously a lot easier. But um, I took the advice and um, I set to work on, on building up these flat pack hives. Now the hives that we decided to go for are called WBC hives and they are probably what you would regard as being the stereotypical beehive. So um, I started putting it together in my back garden and um, now is the time where I've come to site and we're going to start installing them and putting them in position ready for the bees in a few weeks. So the first thing I've got to go and do is go and grab the bases for the hives and we're just going to uh, go through the, the pitfalls and the, uh, the, uh, the, the minor detail of how to put these hives together. So first things first, you've got to start with the base. Um, actually this is called the stand um, and this is the, 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 the beginning part of the hive. This is where everything is, 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 is stacked on top of. Now, I didn't realize, but a hive is actually a very modular unit. It's actually made up of lots of different pieces, which essentially stay loose the entire time. They're just literally stacked on top of each other. So this is the base, this is the beginning piece. You'll have to pardon the pallets. Um, the pallets are very temporary. This is just for us to get an idea about where the hive should be and ultimately we'll be making our own bases um, for the hives to sit on. But at the moment, a pallet seems a sensible place to start. So there's our base, and what you can see here is this, obviously we're standing the base quite a way off the ground, and it's quite important when it comes to beekeeping to try and make sure that there's plenty of airflow around the hives for the bees. Now, that obviously comes from raising the hive off the ground. But another problem you'll find is, is apparently that moisture is a real issue for bees. So ensuring that there's no foliage or anything which can carry moisture up into the hive is really important. And this is why we'll be replacing this pallet with, with a, a solid base. Um, this stops any foliage growing up underneath the hive. And as I say, it prevents moisture finding its way into the hive unnecessarily. So then you will see here, we've got a, a, a wire mesh. Now this wire mesh um, is actually a, a Varroa floor. And the idea is that at certain times of the year, we put in this uh, sort of sluice gate and then we monitor how many Varroa mites are falling from the bees and falling down through the bottom of the hive. And this tray allows us to then identify and count how many Varroa mites there have been in the hive um, and then gives us a judgment on um, what the infection levels are within the, uh, the bee colony. So most of the time this, this sluice gate is, is out to allow airflow through the hive from the bottom as we mentioned earlier. Um, but just for now we'll leave it in. So the next stages of the hive are called lifts. And these lifts um, are, as the name suggests, they lift the hive higher and higher. So I'm just going to go and get the first lift and we'll install it on the top. So this is what we call a lift. And you'll see here that the lift has a sort of a tapered profile to it um, and it's also put together with these quite strong um, dovetail joints and each one of those uh, takes an individual nail through to keep the thing together securely. Now as you can see there's quite a few nails here 
and they're on every single corner. I can tell you that I've been putting a lot of nails in just recently. I counted them up and I think there was about 500 nails to this hive. And um, you can just imagine how, what that does to your fingers. But um, so this is the first lift. And on the front of the lift, what you've got is effectively a porch. So this is a porch way to help protect the bees when they enter the hive. And the bees will enter the hive underneath here. Okay, so this literally sits on top of the base. Like so. And uh, because it's so expertly put together, it all fits perfectly, naturally. Now, you'll notice around the front of the hive here, um, just actually on the base, is something called the landing board. Now, it does exactly what it says on the tin. And this landing board is literally almost like a runway for the bees when they come back into the hive. And obviously, then you can see the, the, the porch here, how that protects the entrance from um, the extremities of the weather um, and allows the bees to come in and out easily without too much of a hindrance from lashing rain, etc., etc. So now is for the second lift. So the remaining two lifts um, are almost identical to the first one. The only difference being is that there's no porch on the front. Obviously there's no entrance on this part of the hive. So these are, as I said before, a sort of modular construction. So you literally just slot these on over the top of the lift beneath and then they extend the hive upwards. Now, ultimately you can add lots of these lifts to the hive to make it bigger and bigger but generally you just start, tend to start with three and then all that remains then is to put the roof on the hive. It's quite sturdy there. So here's the all-important roof. So um, I can tell you for now that uh, this was the most difficult part of the build. Um, the roof is quite, a, quite an intricate structure and um, it's quite heavy and there's some quite sharp bits on it and um, a few choice words were said during the construction of this, but um, I got there in the end and I think I did a, a pretty okay job. So what you've got effectively is um, a solid plywood roof. Um, you've got some air vents here. So this is literally just a cover to stop anything coming in and out. And that's just an air vent to make sure you're getting the airflow through the hive. Um, and on the top, you've got a, a sort of mild steel roof. And the idea of this is not only to reflect sunlight, but also to protect the, the hive from the weather. Um, and that's obviously very durable and uh, protects the hive quite nicely. So that literally just drops onto the top there, like so. And to all intents and purposes, that effectively is the, the hive constructed. All that remains now is for the inner boxes to be installed within the hive. Now it's those inner boxes that contain the frames that you will probably remember seeing before where you have the, the honey bees building their honeycomb on the frames. Those frames drop into boxes and those boxes drop into the hive. So as you can see by looking down into the hive here, there's quite a bit of room there. And in there you'll have three boxes. The bottom one is called a brood box and that's where the queen lives and she lays her eggs. Um, then the top two smaller boxes are called supers and those are the bits which hold the honey. So, in a week or so's time, when these have had time to weather in and the, uh, the wood will start to dull down, it already has done actually, um, we'll be painting these. We're, I think we're planning to paint them white, um, partly because it reflects the sunlight, but also partly because they look very nice when they're painted white. Um, and then we'll be ready for our bees and we're, we're hoping for them to be arriving in the first week of July. Um, uh, um, a very helpful friend of ours called Chris Wells, who uh, runs Cotswold Bees, will be providing the, uh, the bees for us. He's currently bringing them along as we speak. Um, and we'll be bringing them up here and, and transferring them to our hives as soon as possible. So this is our third day painting so far. So the, the hives were completed a few weeks ago and they've had some time to, uh, to weather out in the, the rain and the wind and the sun. Um, and we've put, as I say, three coats of paint on so far. We've put um, an undercoat um, and a middle coat and now we've just put the top coat on. So uh, we're hoping this is gonna be the final coat and then we can put the hives together and install them in the field, ready for the bees in a few weeks.